Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to our LLF Let's Learn Future webinar series. So today we will be uh, sharing you uh, an informative uh, topics, and this topic is called the trading for a living, the three categories of a professional trader. So this LLF webinar series is uh, brought to you by Brusa Malaysia and in collaboration with our company, Excellent. So this webinar will be starting from 8.30 to 10 p.m. Hi, my name is CY Som. I will be your moderator for today. And today we will be having uh, Stephen Kwong and he's the veteran uh, in the industry and he will be sharing with you an informative topic about the three categories of uh, professional traders. So for those of you who might be interested in becoming a professional trader someday, I believe this uh, topic would be an eye opening uh, for you to understand uh, what is the career path as a professional trader. Now, before we begin, uh, if you can hear me, can you type in OK or yes in the chat box or uh, give me give us a thumbs up so that I know that uh, you are able to hear on my side as well. So uh, great, most of you are able to hear me. Well, uh, one thing that you can do is that you can adjust your volume so that it is audible and you can listen uh, to my voice clearly. All right, so uh, let's get ready and um, we are good to go. Now. Uh, as you know that currently we are in an MCO period and most people will be at home uh, surfing the internet, right? And uh, when everybody is surfing the internet, the, uh, there will be high traffic uh, throughout the internet or in the internet speed. So uh, our internet connection uh, might not be stable. So to ensure that you can enjoy the smoothest and highest quality video possible, uh, please turn off your video so that you can enjoy a smooth video and a good learning experiences. Now, our session for today will be divided into two sessions. The first 60 minutes will be presented by Stephen and a following 30 minutes, we will be opening up the Q&A session. So if you have any questions along the way, you can type in your questions in the Q&A box and we will answer your questions <coughs> later during the Q&A session, all right? And along the way, of course, again, I repeat, along the way, if you have any questions, uh, please type in your question only in the Q&A box and make sure that it is actually sent all uh, to all co-hosts. And uh, please type in your questions in so that uh, we uh, we'll be only able to grab your question in the Q&A box because there may be a lot of uh, conversations in the chat box and make sure that I am able to see you uh, in your uh, Q&A uh, box there, all right? So, as this LLF uh, Let's Learn Futures webinar series is actually brought to you by Brusa Malaysia, we have several upcoming topics that will be presented to you. So, this LLF webinar series is uh, related to Malaysia futures trading. And each and every Tuesday, we will be having this LLF webinar, uh, which will be conducted in uh, three languages, English, uh, Malay, and Mandarin. So if you are currently trading Malaysia futures, or even if you are interested in adding futures into your portfolio, then I believe this uh, LLF webinar is uh, definitely right for you, where uh, all of our speakers will be sharing you uh, insightful knowledge as well as uh, practical strategies on futures trading. So if you're interested in any topic and want to improve your knowledge and skills on futures trading, uh, you can scan the QR code below and register yourself and make sure to add it into your calendar so you don't miss uh, any of the sessions. Now, besides the LLF uh, webinar series, we also have the LLF online workshop. And this uh, online workshop is uh, not suitable for everyone. And this is only for those of you who are serious in uh, getting started in futures trading. So if you have totally, you know, a zero knowledge or zero experience in futures trading, then this is definitely right for you. In this workshop, uh, we will be covering a full set of uh, beginner's knowledge in futures trading that are important and essential for you. And it is actually a step-by-step -step guide to enable you to kickstart your first uh, futures contract, right? And each session is uh, around three hours. 
So for those of you who are really serious in kickstarting your futures trading, then uh, this workshop is right for you because each workshop is only limited to the first uh, 50 online attendees. Uh, listen carefully, uh, it's only limited to 50 online attendees. So make sure uh, you really have the intention to uh, really start your futures trading, then only you register for it, right? Now, before we get started, uh, let me uh, give you a brief introduction to our speaker today. His name is uh, Stephen Kwong, and Stephen is the Senior Vice President of uh, Futures Broking in M Investment Bank Berhad. He serves in the leadership role in the company and is responsible for the business development, operations, sales, and uh, futures broking division. And he is also a veteran in the industry with over 25 years of experience in Malaysia uh, listed derivative and security industry. So definitely he's the right person who will be sharing you his insights as well as knowledge about uh, how to becoming a professional trader uh, someday, right? So without further ado, let me pass this uh, to Stephen so that uh, he can share with you uh, all of his insights as well as his knowledge uh, regarding the field, right? See, Stephen, back to you. Thanks, Dy. Hey. I hope it's clear. Everybody can hear me. Yes. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Good. Um, okay, let's start. First of all, hope everybody's uh, feeling uh, safe, stay safe, uh, staying at home and uh, feeling healthy. Um, I'll try to explain today's topic as uh, clear and, and, and as simple as possible. Today, we are going to cover trading for a living. And uh, we're mainly going to cover three main categories of professional traders that I think each and every one of you should know about. Okay. Uh, first of all, this is very standard uh, disclaimer. And then we've gone through uh, my credentials. So let's go straight through it. Okay, shall we? Now, um, there's going to be three topics that I'm going to cover. The first one is actually categories for professional traders. After this topic, you will or should have a better idea on the uh, type of trader that you want to be or that suits you. Futures at the end is a zero sum game. So uh, each of you, each of your trades will be against one of these three categories. That means uh, basically when you buy, there will be a sell and the sell will be one of the three categories that I'm going to explain here. So it's good for you to know as well, when you trade against somebody or some position, opposite position, you would want to have an idea, uh, why am I taking this position and why is the person taking the position opposite me? It, you, will, you will need to have an idea what, what the person could be doing at the other side. So just to have a good idea if whether your decision is correct or not. Um, towards the end of the session, I will show also a performance slide of uh, some of N investment banks traders uh, uh, overall uh, um, results in the recent last 12 months. So they will also give you a rough idea, you know, uh, which category you would be, like to be uh, pursuing with, okay? The second topic will be uh, more on prerequisites to becoming a full-time trader. This topic covers the tools, the characteristics, and the financial needs required to be a full-time trader. So if you want to follow uh, the path of becoming a full-time trader, uh, this will be the topic that you will need to have a good grasp on as in like what is needed to be a good trader. Okay, the third topic is uh, the opportunities that uh, will, you will come your way in trading full-time professionally. This slide will cover the step-by-step -step phase that you should take as you progress to turn to a full-time trader. Okay, now without further ado, let's go to the first topic. Three categories of professional traders. Now, for the purpose of this seminar, uh, the reference that I'll be making will, will mainly be on Busa's two main uh, products that they have, which is the FCPO, the Futures Group Palm Oil, and FKLI. 
which is the Kuala Lumpur Composite Index Futures. Okay, so all reference will be made to that. There are, main, there are going to be three main categories. They are a speculator, and you are can be an arbitrager or a hedger, or even a spread trader. Okay, now I'll go each and every one of them uh, uh, as simply as I can. All right, before I start, there's something that I would uh, have to uh, point out. I would expect that uh, most of the participants here will have will be well versed or knowledgeable on the basic futures and its contract specifications. So um, I won't go into too much about the contract specs. I would imagine that most of you will have a rough idea how a futures contract works. Okay. Now, generally, the first category as speculator. All right. They have bigger risk appetite compared to the other two, which is the arbitrages or spread traders. Okay, they take positional trades only. They because they take they have a bigger risk appetite, they will expect a higher return on investment. Okay. They have um they, they have positional and directional view of the market only. That means one way. Either it goes up, they will buy, or if it comes down, they will sell. Most of these speculators are predominantly individuals or small funds, as we call it. There are mainly two types of speculators. One is a short term speculator, which normally we call them scalpers. And then there's the medium term speculators. Okay. Scalpers mainly trade within seconds or minutes. They will go in and out. Whereas medium term speculators, sometimes a few minutes, sometimes a few hours but definitely within intraday, okay? Now, short-term speculator. Um, again, if the market is volatile, they go in and out within seconds or minutes at the most. And they trade mostly on sentimental or sometimes momentum trading, okay? Now, um, when, you, when, when, when I say about momentum trading, they have a certain target. So most of these, Scalpers, as we call it, right? They look at psychological levels that they might, they will aim that the prices will be moving towards or about to go towards too. All right. They will be also looking at um, triggering margin calls as well that will create a certain momentum or wave, as we call it, to, to take on a position. Okay. Now, when I say earlier on in the, in the slides, uh, they have very high uh, risk appetite, but that is the risk appetite, okay? When, when I mentioned here in this point, they have a low risk tolerance level. It means that once they feel that the momentum is not there, they just exit and that's it. They just end the game. They don't care whether, you know, it is, it is uh, uh, um, um, something that they, they, it's against them. They just have this feel that, you know, once the momentum is not there, they will just get out. Or they might even reverse the, the trend and go opposite position as well. I mentioned earlier on again, uh, they look for psychological or historical pivotal points. That means uh, all time high, they will look to breach it and even go beyond that or all time lows, you know. Um, they trade mainly on gaps as well. All right. This is uh, the effect of margin squeeze that they like. Uh, if you look at the FCPO market that I mentioned, it's now the crude palm oil market. Okay. Every day, especially in the morning, you will see that, you know, that on market on opening, there will be gaps, at least 20, sometimes 60, 70 points from the previous day's close. This will create what we call a margin squeeze, and that will have a uh, domino effect, you know, that will push the market to a, to a big wave on the very start. Okay, I will try to explain a little bit about that uh, at the later, later slides. They trade basically on very low or small tick points movements. That means they don't, they just look at, you know, um, a small point movement, they just take profit already. And they just do a lot of these kind of trades, many, many trades within a day. And that's how they make their money, all right? Uh, again, there might be, there might be question, how small are, are these uh, tick point movements? Well, that depends on the volatility of the product. 
if you're looking at FKLI, the volatility is not high. Sometimes um, three, four, five points, they, they start taking profits ready or, or, or cut loss. And then if you're talking about FCPO, sometimes 10, 20 points before they take profit because the volatility, it depends really on the volatility. Again, I'll explain most of this as the, I give some examples on the slide below. Okay. High volume and uh, turnover. Again, when these scalpers basically, like the name says, they scalp. When there is a, a high movement, they just go in, out, in, out, in, out on a daily basis and just keep on making the profits on a, on a small range band. Okay. Their cost is also very, very low. Now, why is their cost low? Because uh, basically they are charged brokerage when they trade. So a broker like me would say that if you trade a lot, it's a, it's a demand and supply. If you trade a lot, I will give you a lower cost because uh, again, uh, if you if you trade a lot, then you can justify demanding for a lower cost. So the the more higher volume that you provide a broker or turnover, the cost should be lower on the brokerage side. Okay. Now, um, what are the important assets that uh, I think a scalper should have? Firstly, experience obviously is very important. Now, the next part is quite unique. Um, when you talk about scalpers, it's actually a feel, feel for the market. You know, an experienced scalper, you know, even after a couple of weeks, after the couple of months, they have a good feel of the market as in like, you know, uh, what, where, where do you think some cut loss points are? Where do you think some of the uh, uh, price perch is going to be and where the prices are going to be attracted towards to? Those are the things that scalpers sometimes after for a while, they have a good feel of the market. And uh, the last bit is speed, execution of speed. The thing is that, you know, if you're a old guy like me, you look at the keyboard and you start, you know, buy, do, and by the time you, you press the execution, you want to, you want to execute it already, the price is already gone. So this is really for uh, a fast space pace uh, execution uh, 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 mode. Okay. You have to be really, really good in executing your orders. Discipline, obviously, is very important. Uh, you have to have a standard risk management ratio. I will explain a little bit about the risk management ratio in my uh, in my examples before. Okay. Um, going back again on the speed of execution, as far as scalpers is concerned, most of them keep the orders simple. That means they don't start putting in like, you know, uh, five, ten orders at a go, park here, park there, you know, put it at a, put at a, put at a, at a, at a certain historical or technical analysis points that will very complicate things because when things start to go wrong or volatility is high, they will not be able to pull the orders out in time. So definitely simplicity is the way to go, right? They don't like to put uh, too many orders in. Again, another, another um, part about execution speed, as you know, everybody is doing things online right now. So one of the important assets when you are executing fast, Make sure you have a very good connectivity. You don't want those very, very slow modems, and then you know you're getting hang down there. That's not gonna that's not gonna help you at all. Okay. Um, um what kind of funds are we looking at? If you ask me from my experience, right, if you want to be a speculator, um, you will need roughly, and this this is just a trade for some Malaysia products, right? You will need at least about 30 to 50,000 to start off. And this, and this is if you want to become full time, okay, anything less than that would be difficult. And I really won't advise it. Okay. Uh, again, that also depend on the contracts that you're trading, but around about 30 to 50,000 should be, should be right. Okay. Uh, I want to reiterate again at the end of this session, there will be a slide, uh, on the performance of, um, the speculators that's within M investment bank then you can see uh, what kind of uh, expectations can, uh, can, can, can those traders uh, be looking at. Now, um, let's look at some examples. Um, if those of you who know Screw Palm Oil or have been observing it, you will know that, you know, CPO in Busan, Malaysia easily swings five to 10 points within seconds or even, um, you know, within minutes and even seconds at times, right? So it's very volatile. 
also you can abs uh, uh, um, observe that uh, between the buy and sell, the number of contracts there easily can absorb five to 10 contracts. So if you decide to do a position, take a position of five to 10 contracts, you wouldn't lose uh, um, buying the price up or selling the price down too much and you'll be able to execute your orders uh, quite, quite conveniently. Uh, some background here, uh, initial margin requirement for FCPO over the last years in Busan, Malaysia is around 6,000 ringgit per contract. So something for you to try to understand here. If you know one tick or one point of the FCPO contract is 25 ringgit. So for a 6,000 ringgit deposit mainly means that 240 points away from your point of entry would then means that your count will be going down to zero already. Zero, that means anything beyond 240 points from your point of entry, you start to become negative in your account already. Okay, so um, you can imagine if there is a 60 to 120 points uh, movement against you, you are losing already 25 to 50 points of the deposit of the 6,000 that you put in. This, um, this level, you've got to be aware of. Again, I reiterate, some of you who knows about um, futures trading or the contract specs, there is such a term called maintenance margin that is implemented by each broker, any broker that you join. For example, in my firm, if you go in and if you have something like 70% left of your initial margin, we will be again calling you to top up on your position already. Some might let you go down to 50% or so forth, but there is a maintenance margin, which you have to make sure that at every time your open positions or your, 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 your contracts is well above so that it doesn't fall below that. Okay. Uh, I will go into some more examples in the next slide. Meantime, there's a few more pointers that I want to bring up to you. Okay. Um, uh, the again, as I mentioned, brokerage cost uh, will depend on each broker. The higher uh, the the higher number of trades that you put in means that you can actually uh, ask for your brokerage to be lower and uh, and 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 lower. Okay. Uh, something about uh, 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 scratch here. There is a term. This is just terminology for some of you to know, right? Scratch means that. Within the same product, the same contract month, and within the same day, if you buy and sell it at the same price, there will be zero cost to you. This is something that Busa offers if you are a um, designated uh, local member of Busa, right? This is just for your information. I will mention this again in the, the next few slides, uh, just for your information. <clears throat> okay. Um, basically, a scalper takes sometimes 20, sometimes even 30 positions within a day. We call it puns. You know, they just have a view. They just feel that there's a momentum. They go in after a few points, they get out and they will keep doing this sometimes 20 to 30 points within a day. Why? Because they have a lower um, price band that they trade on. Okay, I'll give you examples again on the next slide. Just so mainly that you know, because they have price band is low, they can make more trades within a day because the volatility allows them to do so. Uh, you might get a little bit lost here, but I hope this will all come together when I can give you a little bit more examples at a later stage. Okay, risk reward ratio. This is something that most traders must have and I encourage you to have a plan, right? Basically, uh, most of the traders that I know uh, they have a 310 risk reward ratio. What does it mean here? It means that if you are uh, willing to take a three points loss, you should uh, have a target that you want to take profit when you reaches a 10, a 10 point uh, 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 gap from your execution point. Okay, so it's three to 10. Let's put some numbers here so that you know you can have a better perspective. All right, as I said just now, you can for FCPO, you can easily put in five contracts and then uh, it should be uh, you should be able to fill it easily. 
because uh, that that Busan Malaysia products is actually quite liquid. Okay, so if you were to put uh, a trade and it involves five contracts, okay, what does it mean here? Um, if it's a three point uh, loss against you, that means if you buy and the market comes down against you three points, you cut loss. And if you sell, you want the market to come down, but instead it goes up three points, it's against you, you cut loss. So in terms of monetary value, wait, the loss will incur is actually five contracts times three points, and it's 25 ringgit per point. So your loss will be 375. But if you have a three to 10 point ratio, your profit on the other hand is actually five times 10 points times 25 metric ton is 1,250. So this is what I mean when you have a three to 10 point ratio, okay? Uh, put that in a percentage perspective. That means you have a 25% success rate uh, to break even. If you make one profit out of four, then that one profit alone will break you even again. So if you have more than one out of four, two out of four, three out of four, then you're really in the money already. Okay. This is these are some of the, the mathematics that you know will give you will give you a rough idea you know, what to expect when you're trading as a scalper, okay? Uh, initial margin requirement, like I say again, uh, over the last couple of years for trading FCPO, you would have um, the, the, the initial margin requirement from Busan is about 6,000 ringgit. So if you do five contracts, you will have to put up 30,000 initial margin, okay, to the broker. Now, what does that mean? When every time you trade, and it's actually a profit, if you have this three to 10 ratio, each profitable trade, each profitable trade will give you a return on investment of 4%. How do you get that? It's actually, you know, 1,250, that's your profit divided by the 30,000 they actually put up. Okay. Now, that is much higher than the current annual FD rates on an annualized basis as well. But there is risk as well. The, the Because of volatility in futures, you can make 4% and you can easily lose 4%. Okay, so be aware of that. Okay, now let's go on a little bit about medium term speculators, right? The time span for a medium term speculator can be days or most at the most two weeks. Okay, uh, they are mostly chartists, right? And chartists, I mean here, technical analysts, all right? There are many technical analysis, but I really stress that each and every one of you must do your research on the type that most suit the product. Not all technical analysis will suit one particular product. So you have to do a bit of trial and error and test and see which one you're familiar with and try to come up with a, a, a sort of like table, which one works best. And you must do this quite frequently every, every, every couple of months just to make sure that you know the TA, the technical analysis that you're using still can work on the product that you're trading okay this is the kind of homework that you have to do it's not so easy as you just lay back and just trade 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 all the time okay um the risk tolerance level is medium here uh compared to scalpers which is low um that means um they take um uh, they, they they will have a higher tolerance level okay they also allow for higher tick point movement range. Like I say again, scalpers just now, you know, eight, 10, 12 points, they take profit. You know, three points, four points, five points, they cut loss really, they just get out, okay? Where else, for a medium term speculator, they will allow much bigger movement or range, okay? Um, the uh, asset is the same, similar to a scalper. You know, you have to be experienced, obviously. Discipline, very important. They will have a larger risk management ratio, which I will give an example on my next slide. Okay. Startup is higher, much higher than a scalper. Okay. You will need, I think, a range of 250 easily to 350,000 to become more of a medium term speculator. Why? Uh, this is because you will, to have, you, you will need to hold a larger position and for a longer time. Right. Now, let's try and get some. Uh, some examples in so that you know if you can have a better idea on how this works. Now, if you have been observing FCPO over uh, in, in Busan, Malaysia, you can see that within days, right? Within days, uh, FCPO swings 
between 60 to 200 points between two, three days. Easily it will swing. Just now, the example I give you from a scalper perspective, they look at it within minutes. So though within minutes, you can go, you know, 10, 20 points easily. That's that's the time frame that we're looking at. Here, the time frame is two, three days at most. This is something that you can see in FCPO, 60 to 200 point swing easily. Okay. And then there is this um, uh, number of contracts. Like I say again, it's very liquid. So if you want to put in 10 to 30 contracts, you can easily uh, get it done without, without no problem. Okay. Same, same requirement, you know, 6,000 ringgit, that's about it, you know, uh, required by BUSA per contract. So again, any 240 points uh, movement against you, you can wipe out your, your, your initial margin easily. Uh, now, um, when you start being a trader, right, um, these three points is important for you to do homework on. You must, you must try to understand, you know, what is the trading range of a certain product, okay? When the trading range is 60 to 200 points and you try to adapt a trading plan that is like a thousand points, it doesn't work. It, it just it just doesn't balance out. So you have to adapt to the kind of volatility of that product. Then you'll have a rough idea. So that's number one that you have to do. You have to look at the trading range. Similar to scalpers, when they are looking at a uh, 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 trading range that is between five to 10 points and they want to scalp it, looking at trading range that is 60 to 200 points, it doesn't work because it, it's just not, it, it is just not part of the plan, okay? And then uh, the other thing is that you, the third point here, um, you have to look at the maintenance margin, right? So you have to know that, you know, if it goes 25% against you, 50% against you, that means 60 points, you know, do you have the, the funding required to be able to hold the position? So these three points is very important. So I'm going back to it. You have to know the trading range. You have to look at the liquidity. That means once you go in 10, 20 points, easy to uh, 10, 20 contracts, can the market absorb it? You know, you don't want to be trading uh, and putting in 500 contracts when there's no liquidity. There's no buyers or sellers that's able to absorb the, the, the big position that you want to put out. Okay, that is not that is not the right way of doing it. Now, uh, Cost is slightly higher because um, you don't trade so much as a medium term speculator. Just now, remember, I told scalpers they go in and out, five lots in out, in out, in out, 20 within within a day, they do 20 times straight away. They can do a lot of contracts. The broker will be saying, okay, I can give you a lower rate. Here, they don't trade so many times within a day. All right. Normally, within a week, they, they take position five to 10 times only. All right. That's, that's the norm. Okay. And why is it so less? Because they take a higher price range. When the price don't move within that range, they don't have time to go in and out, or they don't have a chance to go in and out so much. Okay, this will make sense from uh, hopefully a uh, some examples that I will give at a later stage. Now, risk reward ratio again. Uh, unlike the scalper just now, scalper is three to ten. This one, they allow for a bigger range movement. That means uh, any time that the market goes against a medium term speculator by 60 points uh, for FCPO, they will get out already, right? And then uh, they, will take only, they will only start thinking about taking profit when they are 200 points up. Either when they're buying, it's 200 points up, or when they're selling, the, the market has gone 200 points against, uh, going, gone down, then they will look at taking profit, okay? so. This, this uh, reward, risk reward ratio is actually in tandem with the price range that I told you just now that you have to look at the price range of that product is important to, to actually come up with a uh, viable risk reward ratio. Okay, I hope it's not te too technical. And then uh, maybe we can get into some examples. Now let's look at some figures. Uh, easily, let's say you want to go in each trade, uh, you participate 20 contracts. So your losses could be, if it hits 60 points against you, 20 contracts times 60 points times 25 ringgit, you could lose 30,000, okay? On the upside, if it goes your way, uh, you could make 20 times 200 points times 25, which is 100,000 ringgit. Now, 
put that in terms of success rate, it's similar or about the same as a scalper, looking at the kind of ratio that you know I've given you here. So basically, around about one out of four, you're already breaking even again. But the key point here is that the initial margin required for to be a medium uh, term trader. Just now in the scalper's example, you need roughly about 30,000. You go in and out, in and out already. But for a medium term speculator, you need a lot more. So in this example that I've given you, you'll need about 120,000 just to hold the position of 20 contracts. Okay, but then the return on interest is high. So how do you calculate that? Basically, you're putting up a margin. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I uh, in my second last point, initial margin. There's a spelling error there. No, it's not initial margin. So initial margin required is 120,000. So when you put a trade, 20 contracts, you put out 120,000. If your profit comes through, you make 100,000. In terms of return of in, uh, uh, investment, it's 83%. This is one trade, and you make 83%. Compared to scalper, it's only about, if I recall, about 4 or 5% only. Now, there is a difference. When you trade this, let's say within a day or two days, you know, you're making a return of in, uh, investment of 83% within the two days. But for a scalper, every time it goes in, it's 4%. If it does 10 or 20, and it's a 50% rate, then you know he's easily making 30% return already on that day. You know what I mean? It's just it just adds up at the end of the day. Different style of trading, but the return could be just as good both ways. Because one bits and bits and pieces, but it then accumulates and becomes just as big. Here you trade less, but the return on investment is just one off. It's a lot better, it's a lot higher. Okay. Now let's uh, do a quick summary. I just put it on a table here, just, uh, just to refresh you. Uh, recall number of contracts, it's a lot smaller for a scalper, right? Compared to a medium term trader. Uh, scalper can trade one, two, three, maybe up to 10 contracts at a go, but uh, nothing more than that. Uh, from what I've seen or, or what I've uh, experienced from some of the uh, traders within our, our, our broking arm. Uh, very seldom they'll take more than 10 per go. These are scalpers. Where else the medium term traders sometimes take, you know, minimal 10 contracts. Sometimes they take 30 up to 50 contracts easily. Okay. Turnover is very high for a scalper. Within a day, they trade easily 20 times, 30 times, you know. But sometimes uh, if you are a disciplined trader, you might just quit while you're ahead. It doesn't mean that you trade the more times you trade the, the the higher chance it is. It's just that opportunity comes and when you need to take a rest or when you say I just want to quit while I'm ahead, they just stop and just leave it as it is. Whereas a medium term trader, you know, their turnover is much lower. Maybe within a week they only trade or take a position three to five times. Okay. Volatility exposure is higher when they take uh, a, a position. Uh, their exposure is higher for scalpers and lower for midterm traders. Okay, return on investment, like I said just now, around about four percent for scalpers. Small, but because of high turnover, they are compensated that way. Again, small, small, four percent, four percent every time. You know, ten trades really they make forty percent return. Okay, much higher for medium term, but again, uh, they only do one or two trades uh, every few days. Right, capital of course is much lower from a scalper's perspective. You only need 30 to 50,000, where else it's 10 times more for a medium term trader. Okay. Cost in terms of brokerage, because a scalper trades more, go in and out every time, right? You know, they can demand or actually ask for a lower brokerage fee from the brokers that uh, they trade with. Where else for medium term trader, they don't trade so much and so often uh, it's more difficult for them to demand a lower brokerage cost. Uh, the second last point is something that you know you not, you need to be aware of. You see, a scalper don't take overnight position, so and they, they usually close out. So they go in few points, they cut loss or few points above that, they take profit. You know, they go in and out, and by the end of the day, most scalpers do not hold positions. They will make sure they square off by the end of the day. So they will have a good night's sleep, and then the next day, market opens, they trade again. Okay. 
Whereas a medium term trader, like I said just now, they take position and they hold it. They hold it for days and sometimes a week to week. So can you imagine if your position is very big? Sometimes, even though you are cool and calm and collective, but I'm sure when you sleep at time, you think, oh my God, you know, what's the position? Some people that I know of, lah, even in the middle of the night, they wake up, they on their TV, they look at, you know, Dow Jones, what's he doing? They look at Soya Bean, what's he doing? And, you know, then, you know, if it's going their way, maybe they can sleep better. If it's not going their way, they will have, uh, they will start to panic and, you know, wake up a lot earlier the next day. Risk ratio is actually up to individual preference. Uh, the examples that I give you 310, some 138, some 1312 for scalper. You know, it, it's really up to the kind of risk tolerance that each and every one of you uh, might want to do. Okay. Um, um, let me do, okay, the, uh, another summary that I want to bring out. Remember, you know, to do some homework, okay? Whatever that you choose to become, the three important things that you have to remember, right? First, measure out the trading range because no point for you to put a 310 when, you know, the whole day it's going to be trading at two, three points movement only. Then you'll never see your profit. You'll never go 10 points one. You know what I mean? But if you put it too big, uh, you know, uh, 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 let's say um, three to twenty, but the, again, the volatility is not so not so not doesn't even reach that within the day. There's no point or so you you won't hit your profit levels. Okay, liquidity is important. Don't start. You know, if you look at the product and the buy and sell um, uh, volume, it's always about you know um, 10, 20 contracts. That means if you put in three contracts, five contracts, you'll be able to go in and out quite easily. Don't try to be hero, you know, trying to put a 100 contract position when buy and sell is only like three lots, five lots, you will have a problem getting out. Going in might be easy, but getting out will be a nightmare, okay? Um, maintenance margin also always remember, you know, because this has to do with the kind of funds that you have. If the maintenance margin is a little bit too high, that means once it hits a certain loss level, your broker is going to be asking you to top up, then you are going to be, your trading plan will be disrupted. Lah. Let's put it this way. Okay. So for that third part, the, the issue here is trade, trade within your means. Okay. Don't try to trade uh, beyond what you have. All right. Uh, uh, you will have a, a good idea as well. Lah, when I show you the slides of how the performance of some of the traders that I have uh, uh, um, over the last 12 months, then uh, you will, you will need to have a think about that on um, on uh, the kind of trader and the risk reward ratio that you want to put up. Okay, um, that's for one type of um, of uh, trader. The second type is uh, what we call arbitrager. All right, arbitrage arbitrager is actually a a, a, a kind of um, trade strategy based on mispricing, basically is uh, based on mispricing. Um, I want to, I, I, I want to start off with examples, all right? Just from a layman's perspective first uh, of how arbitrage works. So then only I will go into FDLI, then maybe you can piece them together, okay? Now let's say that you have a friend, let's say you're from JB, you have a friend, okay, there, and uh, he, he, um, he owns a car, he owns a, a Proton, okay? And uh, he he, um, he owns a Proton and uh, he has a uh, desire to upgrade. He wants to buy a BMW, okay? So uh, he has this desire because started, uh, uh, recently he has a, he has a, he has a, he's like lottery, okay? So he wants to buy a BMW, okay? He's looking for a, one year old BMW, let's say uh, 320, and then he's willing to pay up to um, 180,000 for this one year old BMW. Just, just, just think about it, okay? And then you are in KL working, and then you have a colleague who also got promoted. Now he drives currently a BMW, also a 320i, okay? So he is saying that, okay, since I'm promoted, uh, I want to upgrade to a five series. So he wants to sell his BMW for let's say 150,000. 
Did, do you see the mispricing? Do you see the arbitrage here? This is an opportunity to make what we call risk-free money, buta buta money. You have a friend in JB who's willing to buy a similar kind of, well, a one-year OBMW, similar color and stuff like that. For 180,000, he's willing to pay 180,000. And you have a chance to buy from your colleague in KL for 150,000, correct? So this is an arbitrage opportunity. You buy from your colleague 150,000, you drive it to JB, show it to your your uh, your um your friend in JB, and then he buys it for one hundred eighty thousand. So you make thirty thousand. That's not clean, uh. Obviously, you know you have to pump petrol in, and then uh, you know you might want to buy insurance for that trip. So in case you don't drive to JB and then you have an accident, and you know you're stuck with a with a with a damaged car or whatever, or you want to be safe, you take a picture of the car. That your colleague is driving and then send it to your to your friend so to make sure hey this one nice or not you wanna you want then you know i'll bring over to you have a look basically it's all about mispricing here you have a product that's the same but you have buyers and sellers who is uh, not in tandem in pricing and you come in and you try to make the money there so this is how arbitrage work basically based on mispricing okay now, from that, from a layman's perspective, I want to now come to uh, the example that I'm giving here, which is like uh, between the Kuala Lumpur Composite Index. You know, the KLCI that you're seeing every day on TV or newspaper, whatever, that level, right, against the FKLI. There sometimes is my mispricing and sometimes arbitrages will come in and make money from there. Okay. Um, there's another thing that I, I, I this is this is this particular session is for your information only. For those, I believe most of the participants here are looking at becoming an individual trader. So um, you could be trading against arbitrages. This is why I want to explain to you how arbitrage work. So most of you who want to become professional traders, uh, you might not be an arbitrager unless you're working for a company. Okay, I'll explain to you later why as well. Okay. But it is important for you to know how arbitrage work because some of your trades as a scalper or as a, or a speculator might be against an arbitrager. Okay. Now, going back, the callable composite index, all right, if there's a mispricing and the stocks is too low, you can buy it and then you sell futures and make the difference there. Um, uh, again, I would understand most of you will know how futures work. And definitely, if there's a mispricing towards the end of the contract period, the, the two between the underlying and the and the futures contract will converge. The, the example, this there'll be an example that I'll give you, but then uh, this is the fact. The at towards the end, there will be convergence between the two, the index and actually the futures price. Okay. Another thing that you have to know, like I say again, there's cost involved. There will be cost of interest, there'll be trading, and there will be slippage. This is a term that you 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 might not understand, but never mind, you can ignore it for now. Uh, it this this cost, the three of them must be higher than the arbitrage profit. So going back to my example just now about the car. So the thing is that if you are looking at 30,000 and then all the costs, pumping petrol, buying insurance and stuff like that, is less than the 30,000, then it's a trade that you can do. If the profit is only about, let's say, a thousand ringgit, you might want to think about it. Why do I put thousand ringgit to drive down to to a JB? It will cost me like thirty ringgit, fifty ringgit, toll money, everything some more, plus the insurance I have to buy. It might not be, it might not be less than a thousand. So it will be a, it will be a loss trade rather than a profitable trade. So when you do an arbitrage, you must be aware that the mispricing, the difference, will have to be more than the total cost that will be involved. Okay. Hope I can give you an example later as well. Now, uh, again, arbitrage is mispricing. So when people arbitrage, they buy one and sell the other. The execution has to be very fast. In this aspect, from the experience that I have, very few uh, individual traders will be able to execute it manually. Most of the time, uh, program trading is required to execute an arbitrage trade. Again, like I said, you know, as an individual, it will be good for you to know who are you trading opposite. 
uh, if it's a, a, you as an individual, you might not have a chance to arbitrage so much. Okay. Funds, you need a lot of funds. Again, if you're buying stocks, you need a lot of capital to hold the position to buy all the stocks. Um, you might not need so much for futures because futures is a leveraged product, but definitely to hold the stocks, you have to buy, you have to have a lot of capital. Okay. Um, Let's 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 do some this is some very simple example. Let's say we are early August, right? There's a mix mispricing here. The KL composite index is showing 1600 level. Okay. And then the futures for August is actually trading at 1625 at a very high premium, 25 point premium. This is a an obvious mispricing. Okay. How do you make money as an arbitrager here? Basically, same thing like the example I give you about the car. You buy the lower one and you sell the higher one. So in this case, you buy the 30, uh, 30 component stocks of the composite index, and then you sell the equivalent of FKLI futures. I don't want to go into detail here because uh, this is just a concept that uh, I want you guys to understand, right? If you know about the contract specs of FKLI, you would know that you will definitely converge on, at the last business day, okay? So in the last business day of August, uh, Let's let's say the KLCI gone up. It, it goes up to 1635. So how do you make the money there? Of the 30 stocks that you bought, okay, you will make an equivalent 35 points because from 1600 it's gone to 1635. For the futures that you've sold at 1625, you lost money here because when you sold, you want the futures to come down. Instead, it settles at 1635. So you have a 10 point loss. At the end, after minusing, okay, ignore all the all the all the brokerage costs and whatever, you will still be making a gross twenty five points profit from that, okay. And and there's only going to be like two or three outcomes only. I I gave you an example just now, uh, in the market KICI ended closing up. Let's say for example the August at the end of the uh, last business day of August, the KICI actually actually comes down, okay. You bought this the component stocks at sixteen hundred level. And then you close back the position and buy buy those uh, buy those shares at fifteen ninety five. Again, you've lost five points, but the futures that you sold at sixteen twenty five it came down. You actually make thirty points from there, so gross profit of twenty five points. Right? Stay on that. Um, just now was an example on FPLI. Uh, for FCPO it's similar. I don't want to spend so much time on this uh, uh, particular uh, thing because um, it's 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 quite technical FCPO. Um, it, it it actually involves being a, a Malaysian palm oil board license holder and then physical delivery means it's 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 very technical. Uh. So I'm just gonna quickly skip through this because uh, I just want to sh show you that. Um, FCPO, there's also arbitrage opportunity, uh, all based on same principle, mispricing. Once there's big mispricing, there are people who will come and take a position. Um, okay, few points about arbitrages. Let's uh, uh, take it up one by one. Um, very low risk involved because when you're buying one, you're selling the other. So basically, one side will be profitable, the other side will be losses, but the profitable side will be much higher than the losses side. Okay, risk reward ratio is high. Uh, speed of execution is very crucial. Okay, um, in the layman's uh, example, I give you about the car just now. So, like I said, um, you could make a mistake by execution too slowly, as in, like you bought the car already. And then you wait until a week or two or a few days later, then only you drive down to JB and show the car to your friend in JB when he already bought the car, then you're stuck. So when you do this execution, you must make sure that you do both sides simultaneously and as, as immediately as possible. For the example, I give you FKLI, when you execute, you must make sure you buy the, the 30 stocks in Busa in the KLCI immediately and then sell the futures just at the same time. It must be simultaneously. Cost of trading must be low, but as a as a professional trader, this is crucial. You you know you must try to keep your cost as low as possible. Okay. 
funding requirement is high, the example I gave you definitely is true because if you have to buy 30 stocks, you buy one stock, one one lot of telecom, one lot of penaga, sign W, everything, it could cost you thousands and thousands of ringgit just to hold the stocks position that you've just put in. Same principle, it all works on mispricing. Okay, anything that's mispriced, arbitrage will come in. Once I reiterate again, it is not for individuals like most of the participants here. It's normally performed by hedge funds, fund managers, all right, proprietary positions, program, algo traders, all right. Um, before I wrap up this arbitrage, uh, um, I just want to point out about hedge here. I, I don't mention uh, much about it. Hedge is a bit like an arbitrage, is, but uh, arbitrage, we call it but sorry, hedger is either a negative arbitrager or a neutral arbitrager. In the that's 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 trading jargon. Um, hedger is more like an insurance play. A hedger is usually an insurance play. Um, very simple. Let's say, let's say you're a fund manager, uh, working for a very big fund like BF, PNB, and so on. So, uh, if there is if you're holding a very large position. And we are talking about hundreds and hundreds, even billions of shares. Okay. Um, and then some negative or, or rumors comes out, you know, that uh there'll be there'll be there'll be big problems for Malaysian economy, or you know, there'll be big uh, political unrest and stuff like that. What do you do? You if you want to be safe, you sell off all the shares that you hold, and then find out that actually it's a rumor and it's not true and things became normal again, then you buy back all those shares. That is going to be very, very expensive to do because if you trade stocks, you will realize unlike trading futures, stock trading is very expensive. So if you sell all your shares, there is a commission to be paid. And if you buy back all those shares just to have the same position as before, it is also very expensive. So when you are worried that your portfolio is going to diminish. What they do is that they sell the futures just to protect. This is what we call insurance play, just to protect against the downside movement of their shares. You get what I mean? So if it's actually a false or, or only a rumor and normally C is back, then they just buy back. Yes, they will lose a bit on trading the futures, but again, it's not expensive because trading futures is, is very, very low cost compared to trading shares. Okay, that's the bit about um, hedging. Now, I want to talk about the third kind of traders. You know, we've got all sorts in M, in M Investment Bank. There are those who specialize in spread trading. Spread trading are, again, a bit like arbitrage. You take a buy on one side and you take a sell on the other. Mainly, you trade on what we call spreads. There are few kind of spreads. The first example I'm showing here you on this slide is called an intra-product spread. Don't think about it technically. Uh, don't worry. Um, this example here is between uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the soya bean uh, product against Pusa Malaysia's palm oil product. Now, most of you all, you know, if you do not know this, soya and palm oil is like a complementary product, sort of like moves in tandem. So usually when soya is up, uh, palm is also up and vice versa. Now, if I can, okay, you can see my cursor here. You see, most of the time, one of these product is up. So there is an opportunity here when it starts to cross over. And you were saying that, you know, the orange line is usually trading above. Okay. So this is, this is become abnormal already. So what you do here is you start trading the spread. Okay. And then when it goes to normalcy again, when orange is back up so big, then you take off your spread trade. Understand? Here, when it's coming down the orange, when it's supposed to be high, you buy the orange. You buy the orange and you sell the white. You get what I mean? So when you sell the white, and here when the when the differences is back to normality, right? You sold here, but it actually has gone up. But it's gone up a little bit only. We can see here, right? But if you bought here and it's actually gone up so much. You see the difference here. You bought, you want it to go up. It's actually gone up so much already. So, like an arbitrage, the amount of profit is here, 
the amount of loss is here only. And then you make the difference. You see, they trade on the differences here. Like you say, more normally you see again here, the orange is usually on the high side, much higher. It's never the same. Here is a chance. People who, who, who spread, who specialize in spread trading, they look at it here again. See, why the orange is the same as white now? They buy the orange, they sell the, the white. And then when there becomes a big gap like it normally does, then again, they will unwind their position here. Okay. But then sometimes they have to hold this position because it doesn't go back to normalcy until maybe a much, much later day. So they will hold all the while. Okay. This is basically a, this is the bit here about spread trading, right? People believe that not in, in normal circumstances, there's always a gap. But when it reverses, there's a chance for them to take a position. That, just now that, that uh, example that I gave you is actually uh, intra-product. Okay, here there is a time spread as well between um, near months and far months. So again, uh, in this example, it's actually the uh, CPO. Uh, most of the time, you see the, the white line is trading at a premium from the orange line. You see the green, the green areas, they are huge. Okay, and then when it becomes uh, a point where it's the same, then some of these practices will say that, hey, this is abnormal. So what do you want to do? You actually want to buy the white line and sell the orange line. So can you imagine if you've gone in here, you buy white and you sell orange, and then you try to get out here. Okay, when you're selling orange, okay, and then you get out, you're losing so much. But the white line, when you bought and you get out here, you are making so much. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Right. I, I I hope you know you can you can sort of look at my cursor here, right? When you sell orange, you're losing money. You want it to come down, but actually you got out here. So you sold this level, you bought this level, you are losing so much. But the white, when you bought at this level and you sold at this level. You are making so much. You see, you are still making that gross here. Okay, this is one of the examples of a spread trading. Okay, there's also other spreads like um, soya could be trade, which is traded in Chicago and also traded in Dalian. You know, there is a chance. You see, most of the time the white line, the white line is above, and if there's a chance that is coming down, a uh, uh, met together. What you do is you buy white, you sell orange. You see the difference again. Similar, you know, this is how spread trading work. Uh, some of the uh, things that you need to know about spread trading, I'll put down in points here. So it's a bit like arbitrage. Uh, you take opposite position. Okay, one you buy, the other one you sell, right? Very low risk involved here. Yeah because they are all moving in tandem. Um, the, the risk reward or the return on investment is average, is actually in between being a speculator and arbitrager, all right? Speed of execution is crucial here as well. You know, you make sure that you go in for both at the same time, buy and sell, both must be executed together. Like all trading, like cost of trading must be low for, for, for it to work out for you guys. Funder, funding is higher, okay? Because if you're talking about different products and different exchanges, you have to put margins for both sides. Both sides, you have to put margin. Same thing, like garbage charge, it works on the basis of mispricing. Again, normally performed by uh, corporate hedge funds, prop desk people. Okay, that covers mainly the three types of uh, uh, topic one anyway. So I'm going to go through now to topic two. What are the requirements that I think uh, you should consider when becoming a full-time trader? Okay, um, few, few key, key uh, areas. Firstly, attitude. You must have the right attitude. Uh, you, you have to avoid stuff. Uh, there's a spelling error here. There's only one N. You must avoid stubbornness here. Don't be stubborn, all right? If you think that it's, it's not going right, it's gone against your plan, just exit, 
don't try to be hero and say that no 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 this is this is not right okay have an open mind explore all kinds of possibilities when you when you become a trader right don't be just trading one particular product try to look at you know as many products as you you can and then um suit make make you make use of technical analysis and see that you know whether the the, the analysis that you like to use can suit the kind of products that you would like to trade as well right um learn from your failures that's important right it's it is believe me it's costlier if your failures failures come later uh as an advice i hope that you know your first few trades actually you lose money then you know you, you're not going to trade a lot when you first first trade you're going to do one contract two contract so if your loss if you if you learn from there your losses will be small trust me if you if you first trade you start to make money and then you have this invincibility uh, 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 um, emotion you will think that wow whatever i touch you so will be gold one then you're going to regret it because as your confidence go bigger and bigger and you trade bigger bigger and bigger and your position is bigger once you get it wrong you 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 will have this stubbornness that you can't avoid it says that i cannot be wrong i cannot be wrong and then suddenly by the time you find out that you are wrong you already poke already no money back up already oh very very important never never shun from asking don't worry you know uh, it, it's it's uh it, it never costs to us just just you know just don't be too so uh, uh stubborn and, and and pride and then you know you you think that you're asking a stupid question when you're starting off nothing is stupid it's more stupid not to ask and lose money so don't feel shy you know just ask anything that you think you know will help you uh what are the other things discipline very important okay when you go in a trade right you must have a plan uh you you know when i talk about scalpers they have a momentum you know but when they go in the so they will say that you know they will have an idea two points are cut off three points are cut off eight points i take profit 12 i'll take profit you know they have a plan they have a ratio you cannot just go in and say oh, i wake up today or oh, the sun is bright you know i think the market is going to go up you, you can't you just have to have a, a a plan when you go in and then stick to it right accept that you're wrong accept losses learn to fight another day don't don't be so stubborn and then keep on letting your losses right and then right at the end of the day by the time you realize that it's going to be too late um prudent profit taking level now there is a trick to this uh, if i can give you tips you know when i say just now you have a plan right let's say let's say you you um you want to take profit when it's 20 points and then you cut loss when it's five points against you right so what happens here is that if you drop five points they will cut loss and it goes 20 points let's say you're buying right when it goes 20 points up i'll take profit so there's a tip here if you have a relatively big position you got 10 contracts all right when the market actually goes up to your level right you can not take all your profit if you want okay so, so let's say you got 10 contracts it's gone to the level right you can take five contracts profit leave the other five but when you leave the other five you remember that when you enter that time if it goes five points below you you want to cut out already so at this level if it goes five points below here already you will cut off the rest of the five but you will still be making 15 points remember 20 points against five points you get I me mean? not so that could be a kind of strategy that i've seen some of the the traders that i know think as well it, it doesn't mean that they are they're going against their policy they're just saying that why don't i let my profit ride so they make by following this trailing trailing uh, stops that we call it right um they make less money but they still let right but if the market has gone up higher you know they will compensate for it one, you know what I mean? So uh, you can you can read about this. I mean, I'm sure you can Google and internet this. Uh, it's called trading trailing stops. So trading stops can work uh, in in a, in a taking profit environment. So read up about it. If you don't if you don't still don't understand, you know we we can touch. Okay. Um, other things what you need be analytical. Okay. Um, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, but at least you know be be diligent you know have, have to have you have to have some idea you know why is the price acting a certain way you cannot just say 
you cannot say the whole market is going up. You just go, wow, you know, full terror, whatever. It's just try to find out, hey, what's happening, man? Why is the market going up? You know, suddenly everybody thinks that Malaysia is a great country to be investing in or what, you know, having good figures, you know, or, you know, ringgit is, is weak and people are investing in and then, you know, stuff like that. Try to find out or, 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 or have a certain idea, you know, what is happening. And then also ask yourself, you know, when you go into a trade, everything when it's working well, fine. You know, I'm here to tell you, don't worry so much about things that goes right. But what's important that what if it doesn't go as you plan? What if, you know, you must be prepared, you know, uh, there's so many things that can happen. So always ask yourself, if this happened, I know what to do. All right. You can't be just freeze and panic. And just like, hey, I close my computer, I don't want to see, I let the position position right. You can't do that. You have to have a what if case scenario. Okay. Uh, the first few slides <coughs> that I was telling you about, it's about, you know, the opposite position. So remember, it's a zero sum game. When you're doing a trade, you hope to be making money. So you might ask yourself, why is the guy opposite me? Yeah? taking my opposite position, but they could be arbitrages, they could be pages, or they, you know, they could be spread traders that's against you. So, or they could be speculators as well against you because they have different information. So uh, understanding your opposite uh, position can be uh, uh, a good thing as well, trying to understand that, you know, you can't be smarter than everybody all the time. Right? So try to understand what does the fellow know that I don't, or you could think that, oh, I think I know what he's trying to do, but he's overreacting or, you know, some other reasons like that. <clears throat> Focus, very, very important, especially if you are a scalper, okay? Avoid distraction, all right? Don't put on a position. Okay, the, the scalpers in our office, just look at the screen nonstop, okay? They will, if they feel like they get, have to go for coffee break or have a pee, whatever, they close off their position one. At worst case, they'll put stop position, you know, they would, they would just focus and avoid all the noises, uh, you know, and, and everything around it. They are just so focused. They learn to filter out conflicting comments. So when you're buying, you're long, you know, any information that's, that's, that's uh, negative, that means the market might be coming down. They, uh, they try to understand it. And then, you know, they will take it that whether it's, real news or maybe it's overreaction or fake news, you know, and they will trade using those, those, but they, you know, they will filter uh, those, those uh, news comments. Uh, again, this is information. You must be aware. All right. What, uh, what is happening around nationally or globally. Okay. And schedule their works. Like I say again, uh, some, some scalpers, they like to trade market on opening. That means. You know, if you're trading FKLI between 8.45 to 9.30, 10 o'clock, they are just looking at the screen all the time. They don't, they, they, don't, they don't necessarily trade the whole day. You know, they just pick a, a, a certain time and they trade it, especially on the volatility that they, and the range that they are comfortable with. And then they trade, they put in five trades, 10 trades within that, that two hours, three hours. Some I know, they just trade on market and opening. Okay, believe me, this is trade on market opening. If they lose, they just cut their losses. They are okay with it. If they make after a few, after a certain amount, they just quit while they are hit, and then they just go off doing other business or you know play golf or you know whatever. They just they don't trade the whole day because sometimes staying in front for eight hours of a screen it can be very very tiring. So they pick their moments. All right. Be mentally prepared. Okay. Avoid stress, lah. You know it's no it's no point. You know making money, but then, you know, you're too stressful that, you know, your health is going to be affected. Enjoy, enjoy trading, you know, it's a lot fun than, you know, having to worry all the time, right? This is very important. Always make sure that you have enough disposable income, okay? Make sure that you have sufficient funds to support the trading plan. Most importantly, don't go like along or go and borrow money to invest or to trade. Okay, trade what you have that spare, right? Don't don't trade, don't don't be forced on a margin squeeze, right? 
this is uh, the biggest mistake some of the traders do. You know, they will they will soon find out that you know, oh, I got squeezed out, and then the market go back to their their original plan that they knew happened. But because they didn't have enough money, they were forced to close out their position. Okay, you must be you 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 must be aware of what kind of opportunity of investment is around you. Okay, when you when, like I say just now, whether you are a scalper, you need thirty thousand, or you are a term trader, you need about hundred, two hundred thousand, or so, so forth. You have to be aware that if I don't invest this thirty thousand or hundred thousand as a trader here, what can I do? You know, um, they, you must remember the funds are always limited. There's no, you know, free flowing tap. You know, you must choose. The kind of investment that's going to bring you the best return and obviously the less stress. Okay, you want you you under, you you have to re, you make sure that you know. Ask yourself this question: Okay, what if I got the money but I don't invest? What's the best that you get? FD rate three percent, three and a half percent. Then do you want to do futures trading and then make four percent, five percent? Of course not. Why do you take all this risk? And then only make one two percent more than FD rate. When FD rate resist, you, uh, basically you don't take any risk at all. Very very low anyway. Okay. Um. Always think of don't don't always just trade and think that this is going to be your only source of income. There's always opportunity, and then you can diverse and 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 spread your risk a little bit more. Of course, well informed is important. You know, uh, make sure that. Uh, you, you, you it, real information is important, but then fake news sometimes fake news that uh, affects the market can help you trade as well because it is an overreaction that you're looking at. You know, if let's say some news you're not sure whether it's right or wrong, but the market starts plunging because of it, then you might think that hey, this one cannot be true line and the market is overreacted. What you can do, there's an opportunity for you as well. So, not 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 only knowing the real news is important sometimes the news whether it's even if it's fake that is affecting the market can be important can be an opportunity for you to trade as well all right always always be knowledgeable and hunt for any market moving news huh? again right now let's go to the top third and final topic of the day the path the the journey that you know all of you should be looking at um obviously i would suggest that you know uh if you're really a novice be, just do some paper trade okay not necessarily open an account or if you can open an account don't trade first just open an account so that you can see the the movement the live prices of those products and then when you're ready in small bits pieces trade as a normal client you know and then see whether this is your cup of tea or not you don't want to be you know quitting your job, lah, you know, uh, making sure you got all the funds prepared and everything and then find out that, you know, after after a week or two weeks that you are not cut out to be a trader, then what's the point? You know, uh, if you feel that, you know, trading as a client, you're comfortable and, you know, you're making decent money, then you can escalate and become a local. Local is actually a, a, um, a, a, member of busa malaysia such a way that you get special perks so as a local you get very low cost trading and then uh, as a local busa malaysia recognizes scratch scratch trade uh, remember i i mentioned earlier on in this session scratch trade is a trade of a product of the same month and within the day the same price that means you buy and sell the same product at the same price it becomes nullified. There's no cost. There's no brokerage cost. There's no exchange fee, nothing. So to give you a statistics, all right, some of the, especially scalpers, when they trade, right, in a day, at least 30 to 50% of their trades are scratch trades. That means, you know, when they buy, they feel the market is going to go up, going to go up, and then suddenly you, they feel that the momentum is not there. The market cannot go up already. Then it starts to come down. They straight away sell off. So when they bought, the market like it cannot go up and then it starts to come down they sell off and when they sell off at the same price they got no cost no brokerage cost no exchange fee no clearing fee that's the that's the special that's the uh, benefit or the or the perks 
or being a local, right, in Busan, Malaysia. Okay. And then if you want to escalate from being a local after that, you want to be a prop trader, uh, there are certain things that you have to look at. Lah. So uh, let's go back to the first one first. <coughs> Start off being a normal client. Do a trial period, at least two months. Lah. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Trade for at least two months. <coughs> Try paper trade for a couple of days and maybe trade small as a normal client. Then look at the opportunities, you know. <coughs> uh, uh, it will be less pressure as well if you have other form of income coming in. <coughs> so like I said, <coughs> don't quit your job, you know, and then uh, start preparing funds to be a trader at least until you become a normal client first. Then find out that is this really what you want to do? <coughs> Maybe, you know, you don't want to commit everything. You want to put all your eggs in one basket, okay? And then along this way, you can look at whether you want to be just a part time. Maybe it suits you, or you might eventually think that hey, this is this is really what I love to do. And anyway, I don't like my current job anyway. <clears throat> so this is some. This is then you can make your decision then. Okay. Then uh, as you are going into this phase, you can see what kind of products that you like. Just now I give you examples of FKLI and FCPO. FKLI is a slower pace not so volatile. So you might be somebody who cannot take all this fast pace. Your heart cannot take it. So stick to FKLI, you know, it'd be, it'd be easier for you. If you want excitement, you can look at FCPO. That is a very fast market. In and out easily, 30 to 60 points within a day. But then again, your heart or your health might not be able to take it. <laughs> then if you want to escalate, next level is become a local, right? With Busan, Malaysia. Okay. <clears throat> um, choose a broker. Of course, cost is vital. But then again, when you start off, don't be trading a lot just to try to get your brokerage cost lower. Just trade some to to something that you are comfortable with. Okay. So cost is vital, but then it's not the ultimate thing. Um, try to get the a system capability like I mentioned just now. Connectivity, all this is important, right? Make sure that you know you have a stable system, reliable, and then uh, user friendly as well. Um, if a broker can give you good research or, or provide you know charting tools or or whatever tools that you need or you're comfortable with, that will be good. Uh, hopefully, you get good support services from the broker in terms of back office, because sometimes, like I say, um, when the market is very fast and then uh, each broker has a certain maintenance margin. Um, you don't want a, a broker that, you know, um, when you hit maintenance margin, you don't pay and straight away they chop you off. You have to understand the broker has no choice. But the thing is that you have already paid, but their back office system is so slow that even though you've paid, they haven't seen it yet or they haven't seen the funds coming yet, to them, you haven't paid because it's on the way online from your bank to their bank. It is still to them, it hasn't reached. So these are quite annoying sometimes if their back office system is not so efficient. So some of the things that you have to be aware of. Okay. Um, as far as risk management is concerned, no brokers will take risks. So make sure that when you're when you're paying up uh, your margins, and everything that you do do uh, uh, do the payment. Uh, don't be don't be blacklisted as a bad paymaster. Then you know the broker if they don't trust you. It's going to be a kind of bad relationship. So uh, try to be a good game master. Okay. Um, I promised you guys that, you know, at the end of the session, I would have uh, um, some sort of um, table for you to, to look at. Just give you guys a minute to look at this. Now, um, ADG, I can't put the names up, obviously. Uh, I got A to H. These are all traders in uh, within our 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 broking arm. Okay, these are locals, you know, and uh, A D G R scalpers. All right. When I put those figures in bracket, that means they lost money for the month. Those without bracket are positive. The ones I highlighted yellow are scalpers. Actually, H is also a scalper, but. She's quite new. She's, she's, she trades very, very small. 
but she's uh she's just um she's not full time as well so she's not really dedicated and then she's got not enough funds so she's always being squeezed in terms of margin you can see she's not doing very well here but what i'm trying to show you here is that you know i i, I don't want you to be swayed by this but generally the yellow ones are the big profitable ones and they are scalpers and i tell you being scalper they don't they don't worry much they have very good night sleep one because they close their positions intraday they just close their positions on average they make about you know 15 to 20k but it, it, it might not be a lot lah, but you must understand this uh scalpers that i, men I mentioned here this is like part time to them like i say again they don't trade the whole day they've got other businesses like you know they have restaurants on the side they have a couple of houses and property and, and, and factories they're getting rent and stuff like that one of them is even who have durian orchard you know he goes there and look at his durian sometimes so he doesn't trade all the time he only trade like a couple of hours you know make some puns going out going out you know his 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 trigger is just to make like uh three four thousand a day that's it you know sometimes he makes sometimes he loses but then he just trades within that period and then they get out so you know trading might not be rosy all the time you see some of you make 200 over 100 200,000, but then there are those who lost as well. But again, I'm telling you, each and every one of these traders, it is not their full time income uh, 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 activity. All right. They have other things and it, and it makes their trading a lot more, uh, how do I call it, relaxed in a way. Okay. Um, just some numbers for you to observe. Okay. For you to understand. Now, last one, of course, is being a proprietary trader. Okay, uh, when you when you are looking to be a proprietary trader, that means be employed and, and uh, with uh, a corporate. Um, few things that you have to know: fund size is important. If the fund size for you to trade is too small, then your opportunity or limits is going to be contained. But if it's too large, also, it's difficult to have a good return. Okay. Let me give you examples now. Let's say uh, you trade as a medium term trader. You put up 250,000 on a trade. You can make 100,000, right? But that's easy. You can go in now. But let's say instead of 250,000, you're given 250 million. You want to trade 250 million. Like I said, the liquidity is not there. You can, you got not enough. Uh, uh, you're too big for the market, all right? So when it comes to that, then if you've got a very big size of funds, it depends on the scope of the product that you're allowed to trade, you know, and, and then if they give you the scope, is, is, is it the product that you are familiar with? Those are the things that you have to contemplate being a proprietary trader. Okay, then uh, what is what, what flexibility do they have for you? Are you just going to be pure arbitrage trader and or spread trader? But those kind of traders, they don't have opportunity all the time on, or you're allowed to do positional uh, positions too okay important is mentorship here you know most of the big proprietary firms they have experienced traders what you need is that when you go there and join them you make sure that you know you get the experienced traders to show you the road because at the end of the day you want to avoid making same or similar mistakes like they do right so be a likable person, nah. don't go in there and then you're so stuck up, nobody wants to talk to you, then you won't learn anything. And everybody's just waiting for you to fall. Right, that's uh, you know, quick summarize of the key takeaways, you know, three categories that uh three categories of traders that we look with that I've covered, being a speculator, arbitrager, or hedger, and uh spread traders, and then the kind of uh prerequisites that is needed to become a full-time trader attitude is discipline and analytical focus most important to me is educate disposable income you know those are the features that you will have to need to become a full-time trader uh last bit that i covered is you know the path of being uh, of, of a career path of a trader start start as a client be a local and then maybe you want to venture in to, to become a prop trader uh try most importantly try not to be led la. take control of the path it's your choice you know just enjoy trading enjoy life okay i hope it's 
it's as simple as I can make it. Uh, but um, if there's any questions that you need, uh, please do so. Um, but if not, hang on, I've got one, one more. Uh, how do I go back to my share, my slide again? Can you share your uh, slide, slide out again, Stephen? Yeah, let me, let me, there's one slide that was missing just now. Oh, okay, I can't get it up. All right, <clears throat> I just, if you got a pen and paper, I just want to put this up on the thing. If you got anything that you want to ask, and if we cannot uh, complete it here, can you email us at mfuturesdealing? M as in AM, futures dealing at mbankgroup.com. I repeat again, M futures dealing, A M F U T U R E S D E A L I N G at mbankgroup.com. All right. Feel free. I'm part of the, I'm part of this uh, email group. Uh, my team, my, my bunch of dealers are there as well. So if there's anything, you know, that we cannot, uh, answer you in time here or that you can think of after this session you know feel free to drop us a line and we'll try to uh, respond to you as best as we can okay all right thank you steven uh, thanks for your sharing as well as uh, in fact insightful information about how uh, we can become a professional trader uh, of course if uh, some of you would like to become some uh, professional uh, trader someday uh, you can uh, email to the the email address that uh, Stephen had that has shared to you. Now, for some of you, if you uh, have some urgent things to do or would like to leave for whatever reason, and before you leave, uh, please give us uh, feedback. And you can find the feedback link in the uh, chat box below so that uh, we can improve further on our end uh, to provide you a better learning experiences. So uh, you can uh, take a quick screenshot on this um, feedback form link and then later on we will be uh, proceeding to the uh, quick Q&A session so uh, can you uh, take a quick uh, give us a quick feedback and it actually takes you uh, less than a minute only you can scan this QR code or type in this link or find the link in the chat box below and uh, let us know your thoughts comments as well as feedbacks so that in the near future we are able to improve further on our site and give you a greater value contents as well as learning to help you improve uh, your trading and then later on um, uh, one minute later, later we will continue with the remaining of our uh, session on the q a all right so uh, let's take a quick uh, it takes less than one minute for you to fill in uh, this uh, feedback form and then later on we will be proceeding with our uh, q a session About another 30 seconds to go. Okay, time's up. If you have already submitted your feedback, uh, thank you a lot. While for those who are still haven't finished the feedback form yet, you can continue to finish it. And thanks for your participation in giving us your feedback. Now let's proceed with a few uh, Q and A's. So uh, here I can see that there are quite a number of Q and A questions here. So uh, I may not pick all of your questions here because of uh, the dead time. And however, I would uh, want to pick up some of the important question that is uh, more relevant that would help you to understand uh, this topic uh, better. Sorry, right, first... uh, see why I'm not familiar with Webex. How do I how do I get a chance to see this Q and A? Uh, it's alright. Uh, I can uh, 
uh, read out the question oh. and you can answer it. Okay. okay, the first question, uh, what is the difference between individual trader and a local trader? Okay, individual trader is actually you, you are a client of the broker. Okay, so you open an account and then you trade and uh, like a normal individual client. As a local, there is a few points. Number one, you have to register with Busa. You also have to go through a broker. But when you trade, you have perks. That means scratch trade, like I say, being like I say, 30 to 50% of our scalpers here, they use scratch trade. Once they feel that something is not right, they get out. And 50% of the time, they get out at zero cost. Okay. So scratch trade is very, very vital for a local. As an individual client, you don't have the perk or you don't rec we don't recognize scratch trades. Busa also don't recognize scratch trades. So you buy and sell at the same price, although you didn't lose in terms of price, but you have to pay costs in terms of brokerage and exchange fees. So I hope that's clarifies. Okay, so it seems like there are a lot, quite a lot of uh, benefits for being a local. Right, next question is, uh, what are the uh, requirements to become a local uh, participant in uh, Busa Malaysia? Uh, I think you can find that in Busa's website, but generally, um, they will interview you. They will make sure that you are of a sound mind and then you know what the risk is involved. And then they, they will also want to make sure that, you know, you, you don't start selling your house la, selling your 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 family heritage la, to do this because they don't want you to be you know trading professionally and without uh, proper disposable income in your in your in your hands uh, so they will go through an interview process as well and then uh, of course your age you cannot be below 21 and etc etc and they want to know what kind of experience that you have as well if they feel that you know again you're just based on the, 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 the sky is sunny and, you know, trading that kind of stuff, they, they would encourage it. Okay. I see. Uh, next question, uh, earlier you mentioned about, uh, scalpers, what, so, uh, there is one person asking what is actually scalpers and what, uh, normally what methods do they use in their trading? Like I say, scalpers, um, well, the scalpers that I know anyway, or the successful one. They have a feel of the market. They they somehow, you know, don't know if you can say that, you know, whether it's, it's through their fingertips when they are looking at the screen and they feel that there's a certain momentum. Oh, like the market is going to, it's about to start moving up already. And then their cost is very low. You must understand to them, they just say, I want to make eight, nine points enough. You see at 25 ringgit a point, eight points is 200 ringgit already. So, to them, right, if I make 200 and I make five or six of them, uh, it's 1,000, 1,000 plus already. And then that's it for the day. So they, they have a certain strategy. They say, I don't expect to make. It's like it's like going to a casino. Can you imagine if you take 10,000 and then you go to Genting? What do you want to do? You make 10,000, do you have a target? Oh, I bring 10,000 to Genting, I want to make a million. Come on, you must have a certain strategy. You know, you cannot be thinking way beyond that. So these locals or couples, they have a certain feel. Okay, today... I think the market should be bullish. So on the way up, I was trying to pick up a position, uh, pick up some positions and then get out when I've got eight points, 10 points, 12 points, or maybe 15. And then like I said, the trading, the trailing stops that I was mentioning just now, they just say, okay, I'll take half and then let it, let it ride and stuff like that. So scalpers really go in and out very fast within the, within a very short time period. So in short, uh, scalpers is actually very, very short term traders that gets in and out very fast. Yes. Right. Uh, next question. Uh, what is the uh, certification or experience level uh, needed to become a day trader in uh, investment banks or uh, prop firms? Well, um, it will help if you have some sort of uh, record. So if you if you go through through the journey, like I say, you know, you become a client after maybe like a couple of months, and you feel that okay, this suits me. I, I kind of relax about it. You know, I'm not pressured by 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 uh, not having enough disposable income. I've got some savings as well. I've got some support and stuff like that. Then you become a local. Then you graduate to become a local. Maybe two years, three years, four years down the road, you've got a very good record. The locals will all have a record with the brokerage firm that they trade representing, right? So my traders or my locals, right, they trade their own money. It's their own money. Don't forget it. But then the record stays with us. We will know what's their good performance. So if M Bank 
M Investment Bank is hiring property traders, they obviously will have won a record. If you have always been making like some of the locals here, right, making two hundred thousand a year, three hundred thousand a year, M, M Investment Proprietary Arm will say that okay, you can join us now. But then, a local who is successful is always making like easily fifteen, twenty thousand a month, right? What are you gonna pay him? You pay him twenty thousand, thirty thousand. He say that what for? I come in wearing a tie and I got to be in the office for like eight hours, ten hours, and I got to listen to everybody here. I trade sometimes. I happy two hours. I just go off. I make enough money already. Go and play golf. You see, the trade off is there. So you probably want to pay the guy. You say, you say like, you pay me fifty thousand. I'm making twenty thousand already. Why do I want to quit all this? So those are the prerequisites. So it's willing buyer, willing seller. The local who are successful might even think that you know I not worth joining now. If I'm if I'm if I'm consistently making twenty thousand a month, my trading on my own time, my own pace, without having anybody to answer to, and you're paying me twenty five thousand, what's the point? It just, you know, just doesn't add up. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, for medium term speculator, uh, does it need to meet certain turnover requirement to be a uh, local as well? No, it doesn't. The, the 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 kind of uh, traders I I specify here uh, are just good governance, good 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 guidance for you. It doesn't mean that you know when I say that you know you to be a scalper, you should have at least thirty thousand. It doesn't mean that you got twenty can cannot uh, too little uh. it, It's just not healthy. I'm just saying that it's not healthy. My advice or my slice information I give you are just guides. All right. It doesn't need to be followed, but I'm just saying through my 20 over years experience, the successful ones, I've seen a lot of traders who go, go in and now some will just say like, you know, oh, I got, you know, 20, I'm just going to, you know, write this out and try to make it. Yes, they make it for a few months, but after that, they start to fall off because, you know, the pressure is too high. You know, when you, when the whole family of five is just looking at you, just one income, it's the pressure is going to be there. I don't advise anybody, you know, it's just not worth it. All right, uh, due to time uh, concern, I'm going to take another uh, three questions before we end this session. All right, uh, uh, the, another question would be where to get a uh, mentorship from uh, trading? Uh, they are, they are uh, 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 education firms that I know. I, I think, uh, well, uh, we will be starting one up as well with uh, Singapore partners uh, to, to do some sort of like mentorship here, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put that in Buzak's website or through Excel Learn for information on that. Um, but, you know, when it comes, I'll make sure that everybody knows about it. Okay. Uh, what are the perks for local participants, uh, traders, uh, as you mentioned just now? Uh, trading costs. Okay. First of all, in all the aspect of trading, right, cost is very important. So you want to be making money even in one tick. You see, you see, in in as a normal client now, you're being charged about seven to ten ringgit one way. So going in and out of a trade is about 20, 20, 20 over ringgit, 30 ringgit. So if one tick is 25 ringgit, mainly you're breaking even. But a local or even a, a, a high volume trader who can demand very, very low cost, as in like 8 ringgit or 10 ringgit, going in and out is only 16 or 20 ringgit. One tick alone already in a profit already. You know what I mean? So it is very uh, important that, you know, your cost should be low. And being a local, the cost is the lowest. Very, very low already, especially if you, you have the ability to scratch trades. Okay, uh, one more last question. Uh, earlier, the uh, profit and loss statement from uh, multiple traders you showed just now, usually a scout trader, uh, how much lot do they trade? Again, it depends on disp disposable income, but if you're trading FKI line, something around five contracts, in and out, five contracts should be comfortable. For FCPO, you can easily do 10 contracts. You can go in and out quite comfortably already. All right. Okay, uh, let's uh, continue. Uh, uh, it's about time already. So uh, before we end the session, uh, now uh, as I've uh, shared with you earlier on, uh, this is a uh, Let's Learn Futures LLF webinar series. 
and it is a series whereby we will be conducting every Tuesday evening, same time from 8.30 to 10 p.m. And there are lots of content packed and informative topics where you will be learning practical knowledge about futures trading from our experienced speakers. So if you'd like to join any session, you can still uh, scan this uh, QR code and register the topics that you would like to attend. And uh, once you click on the link, uh, you will come to this page and there will be an event calendar. So if you would like to join uh, any of the upcoming events, you can find the topics on uh, the Tuesday column and uh, you can click on it and register yourself. And uh, one thing, if you want to find more topics in the upcoming months, you can go to the upper right of the calendar and click on uh, go to the next month. And one final thing is that as uh, I've already mentioned on this LLF online workshop, uh, this is a step-by-step -step workshop where we will be guiding you how to kickstart to trade your first futures contract. And it's a detailed class from uh, A to Z for beginners. And it's only for those who are serious in uh, kickstarting your futures trading. And each and every session, we will be only uh, limited to the 50 uh, attendees only. So only register if you are serious uh, in learning futures trading and uh, not to take other people's spot, all right? And you can also find the LLF online workshop from our event calendar as well. And most of the time it will be conducted during the week ends Saturday and Sunday. And the time is uh, usually either 9.30 to 12 p.m. or 2 to 5 p.m. Now, one last thing before we end this session, let me introduce you to this uh, Brusa Academy. This Brusa Academy is a comprehensive uh, one-stop e-learning platform where you can get all of the information and knowledge about stocks, futures, and any other products that you can trade in uh, Brusa Malaysia. You can scan the QR code on your right here, or you can Google search a Brusa Academy and make sure you are able to find this link and you can access to Brusa Academy for more information. All right, that's it. Uh, this comes to an end of our session today. Thanks to our speaker, Stephen, for sharing his insights and experience on how you can trade for a living, the three types of uh, professional traders. And I thank you all for your participation and your patience. And I believe you have learned a lot of information as well as uh, knowledge on how to improve uh, your trade as a trader and how to becoming a professional trader. So uh, with that, I'm CY. I wish you stay strong, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. And good night.